All right, it's a wonderful good evening and thank you so much for joining us and for joining me, of course, on this particular platform of uh, the online uh, chat with BD at 9 p.m. for 30 minutes, of course. Tonight, I am joined by Coffee Confidence all the way from Ghana, Aqua Ghana. He's here with us just to talk about financial management and uh, quite a number of uh, issues that we are going to be talking about this evening. Good evening, Coffee. Uh, good evening, Billy. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you. I'm very much humbled having you on this platform this evening. Uh, humbled to join you and your series of viewers as well. Sure. Uh, would you please just tell us how Accra Gada is doing this evening? Um, by the grace of everything is fine in Ghana. Mm. Well, that's yeah, wonderful. That's wonderful to hear. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, to start, start to start first with uh, today, we're going to be talking about financial management. Is uh, the topic of discussion today that we're going to be looking at? Financial management is what we're looking at today, because quite a number of people have been facing quite a number of challenges amid this uh, the pandemic, which is coronavirus, that has almost hit every part of the of the world of the universe. Uh, financial management is what we're looking at today, and uh, we have our guest all the way from Ghana, who is Coffee Confidence, as he will be talking about quite a number to do, uh, quite a number of issues to do with financial management. He's the financial management expert, and uh, of course uh, from uh, Aqua Ghana. He's going to take us deep into the topic of discussion today. To start first with, what is financial management? Okay, um, thank you very much. And uh, once again, um, it's been a pleasure being on your platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, I welcome everybody. Um, first of all, um, when we talk about financial management, I would like us to um, break it down so that at least mm -hmm. everybody can understand, both those with a background in financial management and those without a background in financial mm -hmm. management, to have a, an in-depth understanding of what financial management is about. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be very simple in my presentation so that we can all understand what exactly we mean by financial management. Mm -hmm. So first of all, before we look at the broader topic as financial management, I would like to divide um, the, the content into two. First of all, we need to understand what is meant by finan financial and then what is meant by management. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll, I'll start with financial. When we talk about financial or finance, finance mm -hmm. simply talk about money. So anything finance means money or mm -hmm. resources that have monetary values attached to them or resources that can be turned around to generate money can be termed as what finance or financial. So mm -hmm. in all, Financial simply has to deal with anything regarding money or simply mm -hmm. money. Now let's look at what um, management means. Um, basically, when we talk about management, management is talking about one's ability mm -hmm. to control, organize, coordinate, supervise, implement, communicate, and direct either people or financial resources mm -hmm. in this case. Mm -hmm. So once all your so once ability or your ability to be able to control your money effectively towards the attainment mm -hmm. of your goal is what we call what management mm -hmm. in this in this instance. So now putting the two together, financial management or as, as some people may, might want to call it money management. Some might mm -hmm. call it money management or financial management. So, so basically when we talk about financial management, we are talking about the ability to properly manage your account, uh, your money or monetary resources, your money mm -hmm. or monetary resources to your personal benefit or to the benefit of an organization or business that you belong to, or to the benefit of the entire country 
in the terms of uh, governing a country when we, when we consider the country as a whole. So the ability, financial management of a country can be said to be what the ability of the leaders, the financial leaders, to properly manage our monetary resources or money mm -hmm. towards the benefit of all the citizens. In the case of a business or an organization, it will be the ability of the managers of the organization or the financial manager of the organization to properly manage or direct all the financial resources or money of that business concern towards mm. the goals, the aspiration, and then the visions of their, that organization. Mm. When we come to individual, then financial management will be one's ability, your ability, my ability to effectively manage our financial resources or money available to us so that it benefits our various sort of personal needs and probably those around us. Well, there's some, there has been quite a number of challenges when it comes to financial management. We've seen quite a number of countries in Africa that have got quite a number of challenges where, where financial management is concerned. Uh, with issues to deal with uh, managing managing of uh, finances to deal with the coronavirus, the COVID-19. We've seen quite a number of uh, political parties uh, uh, getting into fights and, uh, you know, criticizing the current government in power to talk about, uh, well, let's talk about the NDC right there in Ghana. We're talking about the NDC, the, the major opposition political party in Ghana, which uh, went into criticizing the uh, the ruling party when it comes to the management of finances. Where do you think Africans have gone wrong in terms of financial management? Okay, um, in terms of financial management, I think where Africans have gone wrong is basically mm -hmm. um, misplaced, it's about misplaced priorities. We, we are not able to get our priorities right when it comes to financial management. We in turn try to chase after all aspects of development, forgetting, our, or forgetting about our capabilities or the resources available to us. So in this case, you realize that most African countries um, end up incurring a lot of debt on their budgets, mm. they end up incurring, yeah, they end up incurring a lot of debt in their budget as a result of excessive borrowing. And mostly um, when it comes to the monies they borrow, um, some borrow the money or majority of the countries borrow monies on consumption. They borrow mm. money to spend on consumption. Obviously you realize that um, to be or to for your financial records or your financial management to be well practiced, we advise that you don't borrow money to spend on consumption. You borrow money to invest in projects and activities that can mm -hmm. generate enough resources to pay back that loan or that debt that you are incurring. But if you borrow money to spend on consumption, like let's say paying, um, Paying of let's say salaries, or mm. in the case of salaries, it is somehow understandable because um, sometimes the people need to be um, well motivated to work for the country to gain um, mm. resources back or to get um, in productivity at the highest. But when it mm. comes to other consumption expenditure, like um, to spend on social intervention programs, which in itself are not able to generate enough resources to sustain themselves, then it becomes a problem. So mm. um, most African countries, I think, um, got our planning when it comes to financial management wrong in terms of um, mm. borrowing heavily to spend on um, consumables rather, that, rather, rather than spending on projects and services that are able to or that are capable of generating extra revenue or income to repay back this debt. And then another factor affecting um, 
poor financial management when it comes to African countries, I think it's um, the corruption. Um, corruption when it comes to financial management. Mm -hmm. So you realize that um, you have well-qualified um, leaders or experts managing our financial resources, but <clears throat> at the end of the day, we end up not knowing exactly what the resources are being used for. So cor mm -hmm. corruption is also a factor affecting the effective implementation of financial management when it comes to African countries. So mm -hmm. literally, I, I think um, Africans get it wrong, or we are getting it wrong when it comes to financial management, management of our resources. A good financial manager or a good leader who is conscious, conscious about financial management must be mm -hmm. able to, for instance, negotiate. Mm -hmm. You realize that we always complain about some of the contracts that our government through the financial experts negotiate on our behalf. Mm -hmm. At the end of the period, you realize that um, the, the other party ends up taking most of the resources away, and then the citizens whom the resources belong to or who are supposed to benefit hugely from mm -hmm. these resources are rather deprived. So these are some of the challenges that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. To be a good financial manager or to get your financial resources more effective to the benefit of yourself and your people you need to be a very good negotiator if you don't if you put your personal interest ahead of the negotiation you are going to fail because the other parties will take advantage of that to manipulate you to negotiate in their favor mm. so corruption no. as i said is a problem yeah. affecting us and then getting our priorities wrong we don't know the the projects to, I don't know if it's because they don't know, but because I strongly believe that they know. They know the projects which are very viable to invest in, mm. but I just don't know what is happening. So in priority terms, I think we are getting it wrong. Uh, we need to get our priority right, get committed to these priorities, plan our projects very well, and invest most of our resources in projects that are able able to generate more resources or more revenue to develop the country. Mm. Now, uh, there's the this as a whole. Mm. Now, there's this situation that happened uh, in, in, in Ghana where the finance minister, Ken Ofori, uh, presented the media budget in Palm, uh, the presented the media budget where the NDC, the major opposition political party in Ghana, they had to criticize because uh, to the presentation of the budget, the, the, the finance minister alleged that 11.1 uh, billion Ghana cities was used uh, after, was used uh, following the, to, to address changes brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic without giving breakdown of expenditure. How can you define such kind of um, management of finances where the presentation is given, but the breakdown of the expenditure is not given? Yeah, I think um, it would have been better for the citizens to know the actual breakdown of the expenditures before demanding for extra money to spend. Normally, that's the best practice when it comes to financial management. So the best thing you should have done was at least give the citizen um, a, a well breakdown of the expenditure and then now request for the additional 11.5 he's demanding for then mm -hmm. that one too we need to know at least the areas you want to spend that money on and then the various activities that that money is going to be spent on mm -hmm. but others also think um it, it has to wait until auditing is done since the auditor general will have to come and um, audit at the end of the year but some of us mm. think um it is not the best at yeah acts like this are likely to breed um corruption and other it's related circum um, circumstances or issues so we mm. believe that the best practice is beforehand you justify your reason for demanding for additional resources 
by breaking down the various um, expenditures or the various projects on which you want to uh, spend these monies on. Mm -hmm. So I think um, info access to information is key. So should he make this um, information available and very justifiable, then I think uh, there is no problem with that. All right, in case you've just joined us, you are watching the live chat at 9 p.m. with Billy. My guest tonight is uh, Coffee Confidence, all the way from Ghana, Accra, Ghana. We are talking about the topic of discussion this evening is financial management. You're talking about different issues to do with financial management, the management of finances. If you've joined us, you can drop in your comments on the drop uh, on the comment box below so that uh, your question, anything, any kind of uh, contribution that you'd love a coffee covered us to address you are free to do that and you can also tell us where you're watching us from this evening if you're watching us from ghana you are free to comment and drop that uh, text to say you're watching from ghana all right that would be great um moving forward um uh, what is the best way what is the best way uh, of man managing finances okay um so um Thanks for your question. I think um, the best way to manage our finances, mm. um, especially during this era of COVID, mm. is one, to get um, our priorities right, to know what to spend on, when mm. to spend. Exactly. So basically, um, before I... I, I address this issue of um, how do we manage our finances under COVID-19. Mm. I would like mm. to um, I would like to um, draw a little light on the best ways to manage finance in general. Mm. The best way we can manage our finances in general. So um, first of all, to be able to manage your finance either as an individual, a business, or concern or a government you need mm. to create a budget or an expenditure plan a budget simply means an expenditure plan mm. so after creating your budget you are able to forecast both in the short term and then in the long term the various things you'll be spending on and you'll mm. be able to also list them according to their importance or they ask according to their importance, yeah, exactly. So after creating your budget or your expenditure plan, you now mm -hmm. have to understand each of the expenditures. So as I said, to understand each of your expenditures, that's the process that will lead you to listing your expenditures according to their importance. Mm -hmm. Then from there, you need to understand your income. Where is your income coming from? What are your sources of income? Are they enough to meet those expenditure? You mm. need to consider all this. So you need to also understand your income sources. Then after understanding your income sources, then you now consolidate your debt. We have something called consolidation of your debt. This simply means that should you have other debts that you are owing, you need to now bring them together and factor them into your expenditure against your income so that... that you will make provision to paying those debts mm. as soon as possible. Because the more you accumulate your debt, mm. the worse it becomes. So from consolidation of debt, you now have to slash or remove unnecessary expenditures. Mm. So you've understand your expenditures now, you've listed your expenditure, so you need to now and, uh, remove the unnecessary ones, those that are not necessities. There are some expenditures you can live or you can do without them. So you need, mm. to, you need to take those ones out based on your income mm. so that you don't end up spending more than you gain and incurring more debt. Mm. So from there, after removing the unnecessary expenditures, you need to now create an emergency fund. Mm. So in this emergency fund, you can choose to be saving at least 10 to 15% of 
your income in that emergency, emergency fund for the future. Mm. So with that emergency fund, you aren't gonna you, you aren't gonna touch it within the sh short term. It's for the future. So after mm -hmm. taking the ten or fifteen percent from your income, the remaining is what you have to match against your expenditure. Mm -hmm. Yes. So after creating the emergency fund, then you now have to review and understand your credit report over the period, or you need to mm -hmm. summarize your income and expenditure and make sure that they are either balanced or your income exceeds mm -hmm. your expenditure. This is in the case of individuals. But in the case of businesses or a country, one mm -hmm. must be able, if you want to incur more or you want to spend more than what you gain, then you must be sure that you have other secured and guaranteed source of income mm. in the near future or in the medium term to meet those expenditures. Mm. So in all, to be able to manage your finances, one must simply set their priorities right. So in this era of COVID-19, let me quickly come mm. in. Regardless of the circumstances, we must stick strictly to our financial plan and budget. Mm -hmm. We must try as possible to stick strictly to our financial plans or budget. I say this because um, in financial management or when it comes to management of your finances, if you are somebody who panics, if you are a panic financial manager, then you are going to find challenges in managing your financial resources or your money. So the, the, the emergency fund shouldn't be uh, touched anymore. Exactly. I'll give you an instance. An instance is, for mm -hmm. instance, you, um, when the COVID-19 broke out in Ghana and then the mm -hmm. government announced a closure or a shutdown we realized mm -hmm. that most people panicked. So they rushed to buy a lot of goods to stock in their homes. Mm -hmm. And as the law of demand and supply implies, since there was panic buying and rush buying, the mm -hmm. suppliers also took advantage and increased prices abnormally. Mm -hmm. So you realize that this will cause a huge gap on your income or mm -hmm. your savings. Because a, a product that will cost, let's say, $5 will, is now costing $50. Mm -hmm. So you are over, overspending. So should the pandemic continue, you realize that you are, and your inability to gain extra income, you realize that you're going to be, to be um, found wanting or you are going to suffer from the medium to long term, mm -hmm. the pandemic continue, and then your source of income reduce because just because of mm -hmm. the initial panic buying you went to do. So I'll urge us not to panic. Let's um, be smart and then react to situations, especially this coronavirus pandemic, on a on a, mm -hmm. on a low key to avoid overspending. Actually, the, yeah, the panic buying is a natural phenomenon. Everybody panics. But if you are smart or if you understand financial management very well, you need to be mm -hmm. able to what, discipline yourself and then manage yourself very well. The last point I also state under this is um, we need to set our priorities right. For instance, there are some projects that are not needed we plan to do during this era, but mm -hmm. without them, we can still survive. I'll advise that we postpone those projects to the future so that mm -hmm. we'll have enough resources to take us through this pandemic. So wh what do you think uh, is the best uh, business that one would start during this uh, pandemic? If I understand your question, you mean business that one might 
start one might pandemic. start during this uh, yeah during this pandemic of the coronavirus okay um i always tell my colleagues that um one advantage this pandemic has brought to especially uh, mm. we africans is mm. um it has come to deepen our innovation when it comes to uh, digitization mm. so one business so those who are running businesses now must now innovate and find new ways of sticking their businesses online through this they'll be able to diversify their income and earn extra income online because you realize that um during the lockdown and because of the pandemic you wouldn't be getting frequent clients coming to your shop mm. as compared to before so you need to find an innovative way of taking your businesses online and then so basically um one when the pandemic started you realize a lot of people were selling this face shield um the fashion designers or the tailors were also mm. innovative enough to design locally made um nose mask with fabrics mm. with fabrics and other um, quality materials mm which is helping. So when you go onto the streets now, you see a lot of people um, selling this fabric made um, nose mask and then this mm -hmm. uh, face shield. So these are new business trends that are also coming up. Mm -hmm. Aside that, I'll advise those who already have businesses to find an innovative way to include delivery services in their businesses so that they mm -hmm. can safely reach the client at their doorsteps to deliver goods of hygienic quality. Mm. Yeah, so in all, I, I think um, these are some of the um, best practices we can endure for now during mm. um, th this era of COVID as individuals and in, as businesses. Well, thank you so much for that uh, deep explanation where uh, financial management is concerned. I've been talking to Coffee Confidence all the way from Accra, uh, Ghana, who has been talking about quite a number of uh, issues where financial management is concerned. He's the financial management expert all the way from Accra, Ghana. And as we come to the end of our short talk this evening, um, on July 24th, marked uh, eight years ago when uh, uh, the, the, the president of uh, Ghana, John Evans Sata Mills died. Uh, that was about a uh, few days after his 68th birthday. How would you define President John uh, Mata Mills as an individual? Uh, please, can you come again with your question? Uh, on, 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 on 24th of July, marked uh, about eight years ago when John Evans Sata died, that was a few days after his 68th birthday. How would you define President John Atta as an individual? Okay, um, at the most, as an individual, I think um, he's a humble person, as we all know, a man who mm. loves um, peace, mm. a man who loves um, 
peace and harmony. He is very mm. tolerant. And then also mm. um, a leader who has foresight mm. and vision for the future. And mm. we, we all learned a lot from him, especially when it comes to humility, um, mm. how to live peacefully. And then uh, we, in the uh, field of finance, mm. uh, we also learned a little bit of um, forecasting, how to effectively forecast. Mm. From him, yeah. Well, Kofi, it's been it's been great having talked to you this evening. Before we go, maybe if you have anything that you'd love to put across anywhere that you'd love to put across to the people who are watching. Okay, um, I'm really grateful for the, the opportunity, and mm -hmm. um, one thing I'll urge um, our African leaders. Mm -hmm. to do is to listen to their financial managers very well. They should mm -hmm. um, prioritize our expenditures and spend on projects that will bring about innovation and more mm -hmm. revenue to the states mm -hmm. towards the development of their citizens. And mm -hmm. then as, as also, I would like to um, urge my fellow Ghanaians and um, others across the African continent and the world, as uh, mm. we are approaching elections, I mm. urge them to be very analytical and accommodative. They should be very tolerant mm. and analyze the various promises that have been made from the lens of objectivity and reality, mm. but not from the lens of callous. And also, mm. um, during this era of COVID, I also urge everybody to keep safe. Uh, mm. We should remember all the safety protocols, wearing of our um, nose mask, washing of our hands with soap under running mm. water, using of um, alcohol-based hand sanitizers, mm. skipping social or physical distancing, among others. And then also let's um, not give up as youth in Africa mm. and across the world, let's not give up. Um, let's keep um, the enthusiasm um, mm. until we, we become critical and refuse ourselves from being used by leaders to mm. achieve their personal goals. Uh, it will be difficult for us as the youth to get the kind of enabling environment we need to strive. And then mm. one important thing that our financial and managers of the African economies are neglecting very well is agriculture. Agriculture mm. is the backbone of Africa and Ghana for that matter. Agriculture or Africa without agriculture, I think um, it's not in the right place. Mm -hmm. So our leaders must really take a second look at agriculture, invest in it to attract the youth and the necessary mm -hmm. stakeholders mm -hmm. in that area so that we make that area a very lucrative and not um, an area reserved for the marginalized or the poor in society. Mm -hmm. So in all, I wish my fellow country um, I, I normally call them my family in Ghana. Mm. Everybody in Ghana mm. is my family. And then um, other African and the countries in the world, I wish everybody um, a peaceful year. And Ghana, mm. I hope um, and wish will vote peacefully mm. and then come out of this um, electric, election tension successfully. Well, it's been great having talked to you this evening. I'm very much humbled having you on this platform, Kofi. Thanks for having me, and um, thanks for the opportunity as well. Looking forward to having you on this platform again. That would be nice. Looking forward yes, to that. Yes. Sure. All right, I've been talking to Coffee Coffee this all the way from Accra, Ghana, uh, where we've been talking about uh, the, uh, the topic of discussion today, rather, is uh, um, financial management, where we've been talking about quite a number of issues to do with financial management, what financial management is, how to go about it, and how can you manage uh, your finances during this uh, coronavirus pandemic. 
to everyone who has been watching this program since from the start and you until to this very end thank you so much for time and wishing all the Ghanaians a very peaceful election coming to uh for this uh december uh, wishing you all a very peaceful and fair uh, elections coming ahead of you. Thank you so much for watching. Do remember to join me next time on a Friday like this at 21 hours. Thank you so much for time. I've been one of the Bye for now.